Man, good evening, everybody. Welcome. It is Wednesday, November the 6th, uh, 2024. Just two months left. One, one, a, a month and three weeks left of 2024. And, uh, and you know, I'm going to be happy when the 20, 2024 has been a really good year. I mean, it, it wasn't good in the sense that we had a tornado, a hurricane blow right over the top of us. Uh, and, uh, and so, but, but overall, it's been a good year for Westbury and it's been a good year for the Yaskos and, and God has blessed us. God has blessed us with y'all. It's, uh, you, you, you are such a tremendous blessing to, uh, to all of the, all of the people that work here. And we, we promise we do not, and we'll never take any of you for granted. Um, we are in a uh, in a series on the book of Exodus, and that's you know what it's Exodus about. It's about walking around, and uh, it literally means exit. It means moving from one place to the other, and and uh, and we're we're in a lesson that we're calling the the school of life. That it's in Exodus chapter 16, and and in this, this has to do with. Uh, with the children of Israel wandering through the wilderness and the couple of problems that they had. Uh, one of them they seemed to keep having over and over and over again was, hey, we're thirsty. Uh, we, we want something to drink. And last week they went to a place that was, the water was so bitter, they named the town bitter. Uh, and, I, and there may be a bitter Texas, I don't know, I'll check it up. Uh, but uh, I know there's a sweet water. And, uh, and so, you know, that Moses threw this, branch into the bitter spring and it turned sweet and then they moved on up the way about 10 miles to a place called Elam where there was lots and lots and lots of really good and sweet water but the the first truth that we have we take out of the book of Exodus and we studied this last week was that um, we need to expect trials trials are going to come we need to expect trials they had two trials number one I said this a minute ago uh, what are we going to drink number two what are we going to eat and, uh, and, and God, God provided so richly for them in that. Let's go on to truth number two. Uh, truth number two is to trust God to supply the need. That is Exodus chapter 16, verses 4 through 8, because God heard their grumblings. And in his grace and mercy, God met their needs. He told them, look, in the evening, we're, we're, you're going to have meat. Uh, it was quail. In the, in the evening, you're, you're going to have meat. I, you know, they... they I've gone quail hunting before, and uh, and you know by the time I got my hunting license, got the got the shotgun which I had already, but got the shotgun shells, and I paid about nine dollars a pound for quail meat, and uh, and and that that was a that was back that that would have probably been thirty dollars a pound in today's money, and and yet God provided that absolutely free and and he said in the uh, in the evening there will be meat and in the morning there's going to be bread and in this food there was a test to see if they would believe and obey also it has to do with God's promise now in life if when it comes to life if we want life to be a blessing we need to learn to live on promises and not on explanations which is as long as you're feeling good uh, it is uh, it, it healthy it, it's pretty easy uh, it's when you get sick and it's when you're hurting that the first question pops into your head. And that question is why? As in, why am I having to deal with this? And at heart as it is to say, because we were brought up in a ask questions society, you know, there's no such thing as a stupid question. And so we're taught in this. And as hard as it is uh, to, to say, God doesn't owe us an answer. You know, why is the wrong approach to take? When we look at, uh, when we look God in the eye and when we ask, how come? Uh, when we look God in the eye, hang on, let me turn my phone off. When we look God in the eye and ask why, it places us in a position where we're making God accountable to us. You know what? God is not accountable to us. Besides, if God told us, do you think, how come? Do you think no one, why would make much of a difference? Because every time I've been given an explanation about something I disagreed with, the explanation I was given wasn't a good, wasn't good enough. Now, somebody who knew a lot about this stuff was, this, was, was Job. Several times in the book of Job, Job gets so frustrated with God where he, to the point where he says, you know what, I'd just like you to come down here and meet me face to face because I got a few questions that I feel like, God, you owe me the answer to. 
And then we go to Job chapter 40, verses 1 through 5, and it says, uh, Moreover, the Lord answered Job and said, Shall the one who contends with the Almighty correct him? He who rebukes God, let him answer the question. And then Job answered the Lord and said, Behold, I am vile. What shall I answer you? I lay my hand over my mouth. Once I've spoken, once I have spoken, but I will not answer. Yes, twice, but I will proceed no further. You see, God, Job, I'm not sorry, let's get back to Job. Job offered God a summit meeting. Hey, come on. Come down and deal it face to face. Come on, you and me. Let's play chess. Let's box. Let's do stuff. One time too many, and God took him up on it. And Job was so overwhelmed after God made his opening uh, speech uh, to, to start up. He was so overwhelmed that by the time God got through with it, he says, okay, now I'm ready to entertain your questions. And Job said, hey, hey, Job said, I ain't got a question. No, no question. You, you know, that, that can, can we even begin to understand the ways and the plans of God when God's ways are so far above our ways and God's wisdom is so much deeper than our wisdom? You see, all the explanations in the world aren't going to heal a single broken heart, but promises will because promises depend on faith and faith is what puts us in contact with the grace of God. And then B, we come to God's glory. Exodus chapter 16, 6, verse, 7, verse 6 and 7 and verse 9 and 10. By the way, you can, if you go to the link uh, either above me or below me on this, there will be, uh, you, you just go and that will get you to the outline and you can follow along with us. The, the lesson for Israel is that they needed to be focusing on God's glory, not the menu. You know, walking by faith would bring the glory and the honor to God that God should get. In fact, if it comes down to us being comfortable and God being glorified, God deserves the glory at the expense of our comfort. Now, let me just tell you about my life, okay? When the hard times hit, and I've had some hard times hit, I have a tendency to say to God, okay, what can I get out of this? Uh, and excuse me, let me say that. I said that the wrong way. We have it. I tend to ask God, what, God, what can I get out of this? All right, I've messed this up twice. So I'm going to go a third time. And if I can't get it this time, I'm just going to give up and go on to the next illustration, okay? When the hard times hit, I have a tendency to ask God, God, how can I get out of this mess? God, how do I get out of this mess? And, and what I need to be asking is, okay, God, what can I get out of this mess? Okay, I finally was able to say it. When it comes to my way or God's will, God's will is going to win every time because God made me and knows me, better, knows me better than I made me. And he knows me and knows just what I need to be satisfied. So God tests us so he can build us how we need to be built in order to make us more Christ-like. Look, godliness does not come from reading devotional books and, sit, and, and sitting in church and reading seminars. Godliness comes when we say, uh, comes from staying faithful and bearing burdens and fighting battles and feeling pains. Look at God faith, God's faithfulness, Exodus chapter 16, verses 13 through 15. So God provided food. That evening quail flew over the camp and the people caught them and ate them. There they asked for fresh meat, and God provided it. Uh, it you know, now they could say, well, there's no miracle here. Uh, it's quail, there's no miracle here. You know, I mean, they, they, we just, you know, we put up a net, and they fly into them, and that's about it. So the next morning, God did something that was uniquely and totally God. He gave them manna. Hebrew for manna literally is, what is that? And it settled on the dew, and they were able to grind and make bread, grind it and make bread from it. And it was small like a seed, but it was as sweet as honey. And that was to be the food they ate for the next 40 years. As soon as they entered the promised land, it stopped. Which brings us to, uh, which brings us to God's son. And, and I want you to notice we're going to jump from the book of Exodus to the book of John. Let me set the scene. See, and the day after Jesus fed the five thousand with loaves and with five loaves and two fish, Jesus is in the synagogue and he's preaching a sermon about the bread of life. And they get up a vote to ask him to prove he's the Messiah by duplicating the miracle of the manna that occurred in Exodus. He said, 
No. That ain't going to happen. Instead, he said, look, this manna, it was temporary. It, you know, it was temporary bread. He said, I am the bread of life. I am the true bread. And though they both came down from heaven, the manna in the wilderness. Now, there is a picture of Jesus Christ who gave him, came to give himself as the bread of life for hungry sinners. Now, here is where we separate the true from the false. All right? Those people in that church service, he had fed a lot of them the day before. In fact, he had fed most of them the day before. So they were hanging close because he was a free lunch. He put food in their stomach. And his point to them was, look, you need food for your souls a whole lot more than you need food for your stomach. And here's where there's a difference between the manna in Exodus and the manna in Jesus Christ. In Exodus, that manna sustained their life in the wilderness. All right, Jesus is the giver of life. That manna in the book of Exodus only benefited the children of Israel. Jesus, on the other hand, benefited the whole world. Now, here's a similarity. In order for the Jews to gather the manna, they had to stoop down to pick it up. If somebody else gathered it for you, it spoiled. You had to go get your own. You had to bow down to get it. Okay, in order for us to receive the benefit of Jesus Christ, we've got to humble ourselves and bow down to the Lamb of God. It's interesting that God only allowed them to gather enough manna for that day. And, uh, and, and that was it. Not, and it wasn't because he was afraid that they would hoard it. But it was because they needed to learn how to depend on God on a daily basis. That's hard for us because we live in a Sam's Club. We live in a Costco world. We don't buy a roll of toilet paper. We buy 40 rolls of toilet paper. We don't, we don't buy one roll of paper towels. We buy 40 rolls of paper towels, and we put them in carts the size of Volkswagens that we used to drive a long time ago. And we go out there, and we there's two of us, and we've got, we've got 18 pounds of chicken wings in our freezer because they had them on at Sam's, and, and, uh, and, you know, and, and so the idea of give us this day our daily bread, that's, that's hard to do today. So we need to learn to depend on God on a daily basis. I, I think sometimes, and, and, I'm, and this just comes to my mind, I don't have this written down, uh, this just comes to my mind, <coughs> that during Hurricane Barrel, we had to learn how to live on a daily basis. See the food, it's boiled. We, didn't, we, we all had to empty out our refrigerators and, and all the stuff that we, that we had. And Dina pulled out of our freezer a, a chicken breast that we had never opened up, that the expiration date on it was 2016. It was in the freezer, so I don't know whether it had been good or bad, but we went ahead and tossed that because that's pretty old. Um, that would have been a very seasoned bird, well-seasoned by life. Um, but we had to learn to do things on a daily basis, didn't we? You know, because the milk would spoil, and the and and you know the the things that need refrigerating, we couldn't refrigerate them. And sometimes we try to go too long between feedings when it comes to God's word. You see, the Bible is the heavenly food that nourishes us, and we'll never be so strong that we don't need to feed on it. Okay, that's a good place to stop. Uh, next week, we'll look at truth number three, and that is to obey God's instructions. Would you go with me in prayer? Our Heavenly Father, Father, I thank you so much for the rain that we've had. Father, the magnificence of your creation was on full display Tuesday morning as we heard thunder and we saw lightning and rain falling down quickly. And, and, and Father, we, you know, we had to determine whether or not we were going to go fight the rain and the puddles and the traffic or give the rain a few minutes to stop. And Father, what a wonderful problem to have. Because you see, in October, we had no rain. And things dried up, things died. Uh, Father, it was a it, it was a it was a miserable experience. So I thank you now for the rain. Our our earth needs a good drink, and we we thank you for that. Father, we ask that you'll be with those 
in the in, in, all over who were sick, but especially in the household of faith when it comes to Westbury. Father, I ask that you'll be with those that suffer from long-term and chronic illnesses. Uh, Father, that there is no there is no magic potion that you can take and they'll feel better. Uh, Father, I ask that you'll that you'll be with those. Uh, Father, we thank you for our health. May we never take it for granted. Father, I love you. I love you. I love your church so much. Uh, Father, I ask that you'll that you will listen to this prayer as it is relayed to you through your son Jesus and it's his name we and it's his name we pray amen all right well we are meandering it's going to take us as long to go through exodus as it did for them to walk through the wilderness so i hope it doesn't take 40 years that i'll be 106 by the time we end up if that's what the case is so stay dry carry an umbrella don't drown turn around